Okay, uh, actually been riding here in the evening. It's the evening now, uh, about, I don't know, 3.30, 4.30, something like that. Had to finish up with a couple business calls and I've been riding for about two miles and uh, just hitting this uh, real close thing, trail to my house. And I've seen a whole bunch of birds, uh, squirrels, some rabbits, and uh, two deer, baby deer. Uh, they jumped across the road, but of course, I didn't have the uh, camera going because I was, you know, on the phone. So I did see an article that the DJI 3 has been out. They just are getting ready to release the DJI 4. I wanted the DJI 3, but when I was looking for them, nobody had them in stock, and I guess that's why they let their stock go down in anticipation to releasing the 4. And apparently they've raised the price from $329 to $400. And that's the same price as the Hero 11. And uh, that's the one I'm filming on right, right now. And uh, they're saying the initial reviews, there aren't, I'm kind of feeling a little reserved about this. There aren't a lot of reviews on it. There's a lot of reviews from day one. But they really don't go over the negatives versus the pros and cons a lot of hype talking up and they say you know well we don't <clears throat> we're not getting paid for reviews which they might not be but definitely a lot of positive press out there one guy said look i'm not getting paid here's the deal here's the pros here's the cons and apparently it's got a bigger sensor which is always nice the camera sensor less and more light so it has a supposedly better night filming and the battery uh, lasts a little longer and they have a little bit wider ultra wide type of uh, setting you can enact where it's basically ultra it gives you more pictures uh, more of a spread out left to right picture it looks like it's got up to I think 153 or 155 degrees don't hold me to that but it's something similar it's wide wide angled more than the uh, GoPro 11. So it, it'd be interesting to see how this thing really shakes out. It hasn't even been released yet. They gave it to some YouTubers that had the early, early product samples. And I'm really kind of waiting to see what the, the 3D, the Insta360 X3, the next one, the X4. I want to see what that does when it comes out. I'm, was kind of looking at that one as a camera as well, but uh, the lens is apparently scratched so easily, but it looks pretty, pretty neat. So anyways, got some more camera options out there. There's that rock quarry. Abandoned rock quarries filled up with water. In the fall, you can see all the way across here. It's pretty neat. So that's where the Insta 360. There's a deer. Off to the right. I think I think we missed him. Yep. Yeah. He's gone. I missed him. Ah, oh, he was deer jumped up and this everything's so thick now it's hard to see him. He jumped off on the ride on top of that little hill. If I would have had that 360 camera, I basically, we would have caught him on film. Uh, you might got a brief flash of him on the right of the screen. I'll have to check it out during editing to see if, uh, you know, we got him or not. But he definitely jumped, like I said, that's the, the third deer. And it, it gets dark here around 7 eight o'clock and it's still only like 4 30 or so something like that and well here let's look it is 4 40. so you know it doesn't even get dark for another two hours but the deer are already starting to move a little but if i would have had that insta 360 x3 or the four I would have been able to get him on, on tape, on footage. 
Yeah. And I'm still experimenting around and putting these little clips together on the computer and I turn it off so I have a more manageable section, a little clip to edit and review. And as soon, never fails, as soon as I turn this thing off, something jumps across the screen or something interesting pops up and I, I miss it. So I'm gonna turn it off right now and we'll see, uh, there's a dragonfly right there. Pretty neat looking. We'll see what I miss. Like right here, I rounded this corner the other day. There's a big groundhog right there. And I didn't get him on film. It's a huge one. And uh, I'm going to turn it off, though, to keep the clips manageable. Okay, well, nothing jumped out. Didn't see anything interesting between the clips. So, didn't miss out that time. Gonna hit this hard surface road here and hang it, hang it right. Now they chopped down all this hill right here. You see that hill right there? This uh, mid drive, this 80 newton meter torque mid drive climbs right up that thing, no problems. When you pedal it, it just eats the hills up. geared down and you hesitate on the strength of your pedaling the engine disengages and it you didn't even hear it go click from the chain or any of the sprockets back there it just shifted smoothly and then you start pedaling again and it just grabbed like I said this one doesn't have a uh, engine shut off when you change the gears Like a lot on the cadence sensors, they got a little module in there that the <clears throat> brake line tells it when it goes to shift, not the brake line, the shifter, I believe. When that line moves, it senses it and uh, it tells the engine to pause for a second, a couple seconds. You shift and then after an approximate amount of time, it shifts back, you know, it engages the engine again. But on a torque, all you got to do is just... Uh, ease up on your pedaling or stop briefly and it disengages the engine and then it, you shift and it goes. Yeah, can't wait till the fall when these deer start, and the animals actually start moving around more. Hopefully get more of them on the film. Oh, the uh, battery on this thing is finally, finally going down to like two green bars, one green bar, and then it would show the next one after the one is red, of course. And it has gotten me, I've probably ridden 12 rides or more, 10, 14 rides on this thing uh, off one charge. And I took it, took, it took it down real low last time and then gave it a nice long full charge. And it's like 10, probably 14 rides on this thing. So one day I'll get around to testing actually how far I can go on one charge of the battery. And like I said before, it's probably 40, 60 miles easy because I do pedal a lot. Uh, but it's getting a little low. Even though the battery doesn't feel like it's sagging much right now, but the... Uh... Actually, I'm going to stop up here under these tree canopies, try to get a shot of it. This is the mid-drive with the 52-volt 
52 volt uh, unit pack power, 13 amps, amp hours. Let's see this thing. Okay. There it is. This little button right here, you hit it, and it's a good indicator. See? It's red and green. So it's got one, two, three green LEDs and one red. So it's down to one green LED, then you get into the red. So technically it doesn't need to be charged yet, but it is definitely. I probably could get another three or four rides out of this thing. Uh, the way it way it's been going but I don't like taking it down that ch that low and I'll probably charge it up either today or tomorrow because uh if you get out here way far out in the woods even though now I'm doing like I think I heard a deer snort over on the right I'm doing like circular loops so it's not that bad but some of these trails I ride you can, you know, go miles and miles and miles away and you don't want it running back, running out, coming back. It, uh, you can pedal it with no electrical power, but it's harder than pedaling a regular bike, but it won't leave you stranded. The only way of these things to leave you stranded, really, is if you break a chain and you don't have the tools to repair the chain link, like put in a master link or something like that you know change a chain and of course everybody if you get a flat you get a flat but here in the summer I haven't really been uh, riding with any tools on me I normally wear a backpack but I'm so close to the center of the car from the car at any distance on this trail it wouldn't be that bad going back you know if I had to ride it back it wouldn't be a big thing get a flat wouldn't be a big thing here on this particular trail really cool today it's a nice day a little cooled off it was horrendous the last week with the heat being so hot through here but oh, there's a deer right there He ain't stopping. There, he stopped right there. Right there behind that tree. Looks like it's a doe. Nice size doe. So that's the fourth deer today. She stopped. And uh, flicker in her tail. She's getting nervous. She's getting ready to go here in a little bit. I think she yep, she knows we see her. She's gonna get a little nervous. I don't want to scare him too bad. I'm gonna gonna keep there she goes. Hey girl. Look, just walking off. So what I was saying about that 360, I could have just stopped and looked the other way. And I deer, deer I've noticed if you look them in the eye, your two eyes are up front, they view you as a predator. Deer's eyes, every other animal I believe, their eyes are off to the side. But when you got like a fox, wolf, owl, human, our eyes are in the front. And that tells the deer we're predators. And when you look at them, they know it. Uh, they know you're looking at them. And when they don't move, they're hoping they're camouflaged and you don't see them. But anyways, like if you had that Insta360, I could casually look, stop, look at the deer look the opposite way and that 360 would still be filming it and that deer wouldn't be nearly as nervous now granted she might have moved on anyways but uh i can tell you for a fact i know people will look at deer and actually squint with one eye closed to try to throw the deer off uh but yeah with the 360 the action camera there you know you could have that deer no problem film it real good but uh the only bad thing about that is it shoots in a much lower resolution too. I think it's 5.3 or 5.7, but that encompasses 
the whole 360 globe. So when you cut the section out that you're looking at, I think it's more closer, people are saying, to like 1080p, which is still pretty good, but it's not 4K. Uh, but everything else about that camera is supposed to be get pretty good. You know, she's like 1080p if you edit this section out or close to it and the lens scratches very, very easily. So when they come out with the four one, I think if they had the lenses screw in instead of, you know, trying to put a cover over the lens or, you know, something like that, uh, to uh, protective covering. Just make it like the Hero 11 and the DJI's. You scratch your lens, you just unscrew it and put on a new lens. I mean, that's really all you gotta do. You, you'll have the same dimensions, everything will be clear. You buy factory replacement lens or whatever you wanna call them to, and be done. You don't have to worry about, you know, trying to stick them on. Cause right now I think some of the lenses, the protective lenses on that product just like, they kind of got like a stick them type tape on the back side and you stick them on and i've heard they're not that good but yeah hopefully it'll come out with if they come out with the replaceable lenses and the lenses are somewhat affordable i think i'm gonna buy one of those cameras so we'll see we'll see